are on replay as we open up the Word of God. Um, there from our resurrected Lord, we hear uh, again truths that we need to be reminded of again and again and again. Uh, our focus today will, will be on the, the gospel account that we heard, uh, Jesus meeting and, and encountering uh, and opening up the scriptures to those disciples on the road to Emmaus. We begin this day in the name of our risen Savior Jesus, who comes to make clear to us uh, the promises and the words of our God. I can't help but notice uh, over the past few weeks as, as there are people who uh, in many times and in many ways are stuck in their homes and, and for many who ha- seem to have time on their hands that, that there are quite a few people these days who are turning to puzzles. Um, puzzles bring with them a, a certain amount of, of their own uh, struggle and, and consternation. You see, when you, you open up a puzzle and, and you begin and you lay out all of those pieces, you know that there is a big picture there. A complete picture. Uh, but in, initially, there are so many intricate, small pieces that, that seem to be scattered all about. There's so much a, in a puzzle that needs to be assessed. So much in a puzzle that, that needs to be put together. Certainly there are times when you stare at a puzzle, at, at all of those pieces laid out before you, that it can seem to be nothing but a not convoluted mess that is in front of you. Uh, a mess that will never come together. Uh, a great blur that, that seems to be that it will never come into focus. Putting a puzzle together can be quite frustrating. It can be quite tedious. It can leave a, a, a person discouraged There are many puzzles who have often also caused a person to throw up their hands in despair and simply walk away, quitting. And that's just the puzzle. Because it can also happen that in the midst of of putting that that puzzle together, which needs so much of your focus and and so much of your concentration, that that as you have that puzzle laid out before you, the the realities of life can also come and, and interrupt spouse that that comes and and needs to have that conversation right now kids that that come and 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 need that table space need that that area cleared out work that that needs your time and attention and so it can happen so it can seem that there are some puzzles that perhaps feel like they will never get sorted out some puzzles that, that feel like they'll never get put together. Some puzzles that feel like the picture will never be fully seen. I find it, for those reasons, somewhat ironic that at a time when we have these large puzzles or problems that, that we simply can't figure out in our world, that, that so many turn to these smaller problems, hoping to put them together. But this is why puzzles appeal. Because we, by nature, are are problem solvers. We are people who want to figure it all out. People who want to see and understand the big picture. We are also people who, in many ways, want to be in control of bringing it all together. As we all know, there is so much going on in our world today that that complicates everything going on. There are are so many factors at at work in in everything that is happening in our world. So much information for us to consume, so many different sources to go for that information. It's very easy as we live in in this day and age, with, with all that is happening, it, it's so easy to become confused. So easy to become distressed. 
So easy to feel conflicted. So easy to wonder and even doubt whether it's all going to come back together like normal. And then how quickly all that is happening around us in the world can also be complicated by what comes into our own personal lives. All of that, put it together, and and it can leave us discouraged, it can leave us distressed, it can leave us doubting and and frustrated. Today, we find some downcast and confused wanderers to, to journey with. They're the two disciples with whom we can walk on the road to Demaeus. And I think every single one of us who is living in, in this day right late to how those disciples were feeling as they went on that seven-mile journey that day. There, there was so much that was going in their, on in, in their lives that was just simply outside uh, of the normal. There was so much going on, too much for them, in fact, to figure out and put together so that it could all come together in a, in a way, in a, in a picture that would make any kind of sense to them. You could just tell by the way in which they described the situation to this man, little did they know that it was Jesus, but you can just tell by the way that they described what, what was happening in their lives, the information that they were trying to digest, that that it simply wouldn't fit together for them. They were confounded by all of the pieces of information that were there in front of them, confounded as to how it possibly could all be pictures of the same puzzle. Listen once once more as they describe their problem. They said, Jesus was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. But the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, they say, there's another piece of the puzzle, what is more, this is the third day since all this took place. In addition, Another piece of the puzzle. Some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then, one more piece of the puzzle. Some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. For these two men on the road to Emmaus, there was simply too much that did not make sense to them. Too much in in all of this that, that simply didn't seem to go together. Too much of what they expected from the Messiah, the one that they thought was going to be the deliverer of Israel, that did not go together with what they had seen taking place in the days just prior. And who knows? Maybe this seven-mile walk that they were taking away from Jerusalem, back to the place where they lived, back to Emmaus, was these disciples, these two disciples, giving up on it all throwing their hands up in consternation and frustration and saying, none of this makes sense. None of this goes together. I'm just going to be done with it all. And that was exactly the problem, wasn't it? They were trying to make sense of it all by themselves. They were trying to put everything together by their own understanding. They were putting together a picture based upon what they thought that picture should look like, based upon their own expectations of what it should look like. Isn't that what leads to much of the problems in our own lives as well? 
Isn't that much what leads to, to so much dissension, confusion, distress, frustration for us as well? As we look out into the, the world around us, as we look at this, this huge picture that is in front of us, this huge puzzle that is in front of us, don't we so often want to figure it all out by ourselves? We want each and every piece of it to make sense. We want to be able to see and also understand the bigger picture that is at work in it all. And what is more, we want that bigger picture to look a certain way. And so like those disciples, we enter into endless debate. We engage in, in constant conjecture. We, we send our minds spinning with an influx of news and information as we try to, to put everything together in a way that will make sense to us. Putting it all together in a picture that looks good to us. It's no wonder that day as those disciples tried to put everything together on their own in a way that made sense to them, that, that they felt the way that they did. Luke tells us they were downcast. And so, also, it's no wonder why we so often feel the way that we do as we try to figure everything out, as we try to put it all together, as we try to make it all make sense. In a way, in a, into a picture that we want to see. Like those disciples that day on the road to Emmaus, we also need Jesus to come and to first confront us. To confront us in the very same way that he came and, and confronted those disciples that day. See, so just listen once more to the response that he gave to those disciples as they laid out all that didn't make sense to them. As they described to Jesus all that, that couldn't possibly go together into a, a great big picture. Listen to what Jesus said. How foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter into his glory how foolish you are how slow of heart to believe Oh, don't those words of our Savior Jesus cut straight to the heart and convict the sinners that we are. As we try to figure it all out, as we try to put all of the pieces together, as we try to, to lay out a picture that, that fits our understanding and fits our desires, what does Jesus do? He points us to how often we forget that we have the Word of God. And Jesus' words hurt. But then note how the resurrected Lord deals with his slow and foolish disciples. He does not condemn our foolish ignorance and leave us to, to figure it out for ourselves. He deals with us as patiently and as lovingly as he dealt with these two on the road to Emmaus. Luke tells us, and beginning with Moses and all of the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. In times of uncertainty and doubt, when nothing seems to make sense, when nothing seems like it will work together, when it seems like there might not be a bigger picture at all, Jesus points us to his word. He points us to all of those scriptures, all that those scriptures say about God's eternal big picture plan. 
And it is there in the Word of God that we see that this is not a blur. We see, in fact, that this is not even a puzzle. Because there in that Word, we see Jesus. God's answer to every problem that is caused by sin, God's ish answer to every issue that is stirred up by that sin. There in the Word of God, we have the promises of God's almighty and eternal control. There in the Word, God gives proof after proof of his overarching wisdom and his untraceable ways. There in his word, God says, my plans are not your plans and my ways are not your ways. And there in his words, he gives us so many reasons to give thanks for that great declaration. When the puzzle is scattered out before you, there are times when someone might come into the room and very quickly show you that, that one piece that helps you to begin to put it all together. Jesus comes and does something much different. Jesus comes when all of the pieces are laid out in front of us, when all uh, of the confusion is high, when the, the picture is blurred and, and we're about to give up and throw our hands up in consternation, Jesus comes and he doesn't just show us that one piece. He holds up his word and he tells us that the picture is complete. And yet even then, like these disciples, we still need God's help. Because sinful pride inside of each one of us will always push that help away. Sinful blindness will, will always keep us from seeing what, what is put there in front of us by our Lord. And so once more in Luke, we see that Jesus provides the answer. Then their eyes were opened, Luke tells us, and they recognized him. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? May we listen to Jesus urging to go always to that word of God. May Jesus also open our eyes so that we see truly all that the scriptures give to us. We have the gift of faith in the God of all in every moment of chaos. We turn daily to that God of all in the scriptures that he opens to us by his grace. Amen.